Greg, thanks for hopping on Zoom with me today. I'm really stoked to, to you know, hear your story and just talk to you about the military edition straps that you're making uh, for us. Um, if, if this is your first time hearing about Greg, this is Greg Stevens from Greg Stevens Design. Um, I'm RT from Vortec Watch Company. We partnered on the military edition uh, for us. That's what's on my wrist right now. I got this strap on right now and Greg made this and all of our military edition straps for us. How are you doing today, Greg? I'm doing pretty good. Nice talking awesome. to you, RT. Yeah, thank you so much for obviously all your hard work and help with this project and then uh, some of your time. I'm really excited to, to see your space. So, um, Greg, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and kind of your story and how you got into making custom watch straps? Um, I, I don't know, I guess long story, short story, maybe middle story. Um, <laughs> I've always kind of had a thing for watches. I remember my first watch I got in second grade. It was a Texas Instruments digital watch. And um, it's probably 1976 or so. It was one of the first digital watches out there. And ever since then, I've almost always had a watch on my wrist. Um, and uh, back in 2005, the watch collecting was starting to get a little bit out of control. Um, I was like buying watches and hiding them from my wife. And I think a lot of watch collectors <laughs> can relate. I so, think a lot of people do that. Yep. Yeah. So it, it was getting really, really bad. And, um, and I, I kind of stumbled on, I sounds weird, but I've got large wrists. They're eight inch wrists and, and leather bands never fit. So I always kind of had um, my watches on bracelets. Um, but I, I kind of discovered the brand Panerai back in 2005 and one of the appeals of Panerai is uh, changing up straps. And guys kind of go nuts. I know guys who have 500 watch straps in their collection. Wow. And uh, I couldn't afford a Panerai, but I had some other watches. I'm like, I want to wear leather and, and swap them around. And I tried buying some leather straps that were extra long. And they might fit, but they were kind of a junk quality. Like they look good in pictures, but in real, in real life, the leather's plasticky or doesn't, doesn't fill like real leather, if it's stamped genuine leather on the back, sure. you might need to question whether or not it's actual leather. Yeah, um, if it's genuine, right. Yeah, if it's just genuine leather, they're trying to sell you on that it's actual leather, <laughs> which might be something to look out for. Um, but uh, on one of the watch forums that I was um, kind of active on at the time, there was a guy um, who made his own watch band. He's got nine and a half inch wrists and he made his own watch band. And I'm like, hey, that looks pretty cool. I wonder how difficult that is. Went down to a leather store, picked up some leather, some knives and glue and kind of cobbled together, um, cobbled together a strap. And it turned out pretty nice. And I said, huh, I wonder if I could sell these. And so I posted a couple of straps for sale on another forum and I sold two straps the first night. Um, the, the first customer was a guy named Tom Knight in the UK. Okay. And I cobbled up a strap. I sent it off to him. About a week later, he gets the strap. And he says, hey, Greg, this is the greatest strap I've ever seen. And he's <laughs> like, can I order two more? And yeah. so he ordered, he ordered two more straps. And I started selling three or four a week, four or five a week. Once I got up to about a dozen or so straps a week, my wife was like, all right, this isn't working. Um, I was... I had a day job. I was a sales director for a service company in California. And so I'd be working all day. I'd come home. I had small kids. I'd hang out with the wife, hang out with the kids. And once everyone is in bed by nine or 10 o'clock, I'd go downstairs and cobble up straps on the kitchen counter up until 12 or one o'clock. And uh, that's kind of like how it started. Um, at, the, at the time that my wife gave me the ultimatum, she said, you either got to figure something else out or stop making straps. I'm like, all right, I got to figure something else out. So I found, uh, I was living in California at the time and I found a local leather craftsman, um, an old school Italian guy with about 50 years worth of experience making straps. And so I kind of shunted off pr some production to him to free up some of my time. And the business kind of took off at that point, um, probably because there were probably about five or six guys in the world making custom straps back in yep. 2005 yeah and there's a, a big demand for it so um that's kind of how we ran things for a few years is that i would handle the business end i'd source the materials i'd manage the design 
um, and have uh, my friend Paolo do the manufacturing of most of the straps. Yeah. Um, and then in 2009, in the recession, I lost my day job and went full time as a strap maker, uh, leather craftsman um, after yeah. that. Um, I still use Paolo for uh, some large production run orders um, and things. Um, and I am making quite a bit more now um, with uh, watch straps and I've expanded to wallets and belts and other leather goods, knife sheaths. Um, launched a watch brand a few years ago yeah. um, that I've kind of been kind of slowly growing it as part of the business. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the story there. No, that's awesome. And I, you know, I think, um, I think one of the best things about the micro brand watch industry is that, you know, you, you make your own watches, right. But I, I, I don't think either of us really thinks of each other as competitors, you know, we're, we're friends trying to help each other out and, right. um, and obviously we partnered on, on the military edition. And I think there's a lot of people in our industry that are doing stuff like that and collaborations and, you know, I, I think that's that's one of the best things about running a small watch company is is just how open, especially the American watch industry, is to working together instead of, you know, um, working apart. <laughs> yeah, so. I think I think what's nice is I, I like to see originality. I like to see people kind of working into their own niche, and that's one of the things that I loved about what you guys are doing is I love all this old, I've always kind of liked vintage stuff. I might show you my desk later, but I've got one of those old vintage tanker desks. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like, it's it's like super loud. If you've ever cool. like used one, you can like hear the, hear the noise, but I've yeah. got old chair. Um, I've always loved old vintage military stuff mm. because that, that stuff, it was made, it's like very purposeful in design and it's super functional. And I think there's some real beauty in that simplicity of it. Yeah. And so you taking these old pocket watches and giving them a new life and a new functionality and upcycling and repurposing that kind of strikes a lot of uh checks a lot of boxes for me yeah me too that's why we do it i love it speaking of niche and focus and all that um when you first started versus where you are now what um you know you mentioned panerai um and i know you make straps for panerai um in collectors but where did you start as far as your niche that you were focused on and what brands did you make straps for? And then like, what, what's kind of your focus or, or, or realm now? So Panerai is really uh, where it took off, but then, you know, people who collect watches, they collect watches. And mm -hmm. so it kind of branched off to, you know, I build straps for almost every watch out there as, as long as you've got a normal lug setup. Yeah. Um, you know, if the watches are, or if the straps attached with a screw or spring bar, then, I can pretty much build for it. So IWC, Omega, Tudor, um, yeah, pretty much any any watch brand out there, I probably made watch straps for them. That's awesome. Um, and let's dive in. Let's talk about um, the the military edition straps that you make for us. Um, this was the strap that kind of started everything for me. Um, do you have a name for this type of you know, vintage military green canvas strap? Uh, I I don't have a fancy name for it. I just call it a vintage military canvas. That's like, that's Perfect. exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, canvas strap. I, I, I like, um, I'm kind of textural in that I like, I like different textures and mm -hmm. the feel of products. That's why my leathers always or generally feel like really nice. They've got like, yep. they feel like leather. And then combining the canvas with the leather, it just, I don't know, it looks great. It feels good. Um, it's got that nice kind of warmer vintage feel to it. Yeah, and here it is on the military edition. This is this is my favorite strap. I've I've worn this every day for, I guess about a year and a half now. This was our first prototype of the military Jeez. edition. And you it can see I'm in great. like the the second to last hole here, but it's yeah. not really that worn. Like you can tell that's where I put it. But yeah. the the I think a true test of the strap is the leather backing. You can tell that I use that hole more than the other ones, but like it's not, right. it's still, it's still flat. Um, it's still really solid. Um, I think one of my favorite things about the canvas is that it does fray just a little tiny bit on the edges. Right. Um, and, and I don't know if that's on purpose, Greg, but it looks really cool, especially with our, you know, all the, our watches have patina and yeah. they're all different. So it's sweet. Yeah, it's kind, of, it, it's kind of on purpose. I know there's guys who take a, they'll do a canvas and they'll do like a rolled edge yeah. on it. 
so I, I've never I've never bothered to take the time to learn how to do that. And so I and and I like the rough edge. I like things to look worn and just you know it's like an old baseball glove. You want them to look all worn and broken in and soft. And and I like my watch shops to feel that same way. So how do you make this? Like it's got a leather backing and then you're stitching all the way around and you have a uh, canvas on the top. And this, this canvas, uh, if, if you're watching this and you're not familiar with the military edition, this canvas is actually from a canvas bag. Most of the bags that I sent Greg were like Vietnam era. Um, so that's where this comes from. But Greg, how do you make this specifically? What's your process? Hang on one second. Let me go grab a, a sample. Yeah. All right, I'm back. So one, one of the challenges with making a canvas strap is that you want it to be strong where it attaches to the watch mm -hmm. and you don't want it to fray or come apart or get weaker. Um, I don't like it when a strap shrinks up at the lugs, leaving a big gap. And so if I took canvas and I just, and I just rolled it over, so it's just so you've got like canvas and a spring bar or a screw bar that attaches to the watch. That's that's going to kind of fray and shrink up over time. So what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll I'll take the I'll take a piece of canvas and and cut it out and then I'll laminate. So here's some canvas and then I'll yep. laminate some leather, glue some leather to the back side of it. Got it. And so and then from there, I can I can fold it over. I don't know if you can see that, but I can yeah. fold it over. So that you've got leather and canvas um, there at the end, and so the leather kind of holds the canvas in place and keeps it from fraying and shrinking up at the end. And so, awesome. at, and so at that point, um, I'm ready to I'll skive this end down, and so that it kind of is an angle, so it'll sit flat with the layer that I uh, glue onto the backside. So awesome. In uh, yeah, in, that's that's pretty much how I make those straps. Oh, and uh, just curious, you know, how many straps, if it's, if it's just you, how many straps can you realistically make in a day, you know? Um, now it depends. Canvas straps take longer because you've got a couple extra steps involved in it. Um, if it's just me and I'm not answering emails, I'm not running to the grocery store or taking my yep. kids to wherever, um, I could probably knock out uh, six or seven straps in a day. Cool. Maybe, maybe more if they're all the same leather and, and I don't have to do anything to the leather if I don't have to thin it out or, or whatnot. Yeah. So yeah, and probably six or seven a day, maybe a couple more if, I, if I'm really in, in the groove. Yeah, that's, that's what, what makes it special, right? And that's why we, we can make just a handful of watches a day, but that's, um, that's why we do it. It's, it's one off really cool thing. So this um, is another canvas strap. This is for our special edition for the the second edition, 2020 military edition, this is our special edition strap. So this is also canvas, but it's just more of a beige color. Um, but we changed up the leather loops that you added. Um, and this was at your recommendation, Greg, what, um, what made you choose this type of leather? It's more like a, I don't know, rustic looking kind of thing. Yeah, I, I thought the color um, matched a little bit better. Yeah. I'm a little weird with my browns, and I like uh, I like true brown leather. Um, I don't. Um, again, I'm kind of weird with my brown colors and colors in general. Um, yeah. Some people might say I'm boring, but I like a true brown. I don't like a brown that has a lot of red in it. And I thought that this it's almost like like a gray brown in a way, and I thought that it just matched up really nice with the canvas. I thought it I thought it made for a nice complimentary look. Yeah, I agree. I love it. It's it might be my new favorite. Um, this one though, I, I, we, we call it the bomber jacket leather. Right. Um, this is the softest leather I've ever felt. So it's our, our, it's our military edition comes with the green and then the bomber jacket leather and then a, a nice standard thick black leather. Um, but tell us about this leather. Where does this come from? And like, why is it so awesome and soft? <laughs> so, I, um, I've got a couple of leather suppliers that I'm always scouring their website and I saw that stuff come up and I, again, I love everything that's got kind of this old school look um, and kind of weather and vintagey type of a look. Uh, so I ordered up a side of it and when I came in, I couldn't believe how soft it was. 
and it's like really strong too. That's the other thing. Sometimes you get a really soft leather, but it's like stretchy and and it kind of loses its shape. This stuff is super tough. Um, it's yeah. super soft. Um, it's the Horween leather, which mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people probably heard of Horween. Um, they're a tannery out of Chicago, and uh, yeah, it's just um, yeah, I thought it was unique looking, um, wonderful feel. Um, it will develop a real nice patina, yep. um, kind of darken up around the edges and and so forth, which is another thing that I really like about leather. So, yeah, I've yeah. seen uh, a couple, um, you know, a, a few local customers, customer in Denver um, has a military edition and has this, the bomber jacket leather on, on his watch. Um, and, it, and it has just a, a little bit of, just the right amount, I would say, of patina. Um, but he said the same thing. He, he thought initially when he put it on that because it's so soft that it might wear faster. Um, but he's been extremely impressed and um, told me he pretty much hasn't taken it off since um, he got the watch. So um, nice. that makes me, me feel good, hopefully you too. <laughs> um, it, tell us about this. This is our black strap. This one has red stitching on it this year. Um, our, one of our changes for the second edition is, it's a little hard to see probably in this light, but I'll, I'll throw up a picture maybe. Um, but we added a little red um, flare to the case tube of the watch, just a tiny bit of red towards the top of the watch. And that was inspired by uh, the red tails and accents on the B-17s and the other B-bombers in World War II. Um, and so we said, okay, for the black strap, let's add some red stitching. Um, so tell us about this uh, more simple standard black leather. Um, I, I'm really impressed with just the thickness and the sturdiness of this one. Yeah, that's a sturdy one. Um, that leather comes from a tannery, um, Acadia Leather up in Maine. It's where I found that. And it's kind of got uh, just the right amount of sheen to it. Yeah. So it's kind of almost like a, a semi or satin finish, maybe, if you're, if you're looking at it. Um, a real smooth finish. It's just kind of a classic black leather. Um, and again, that's one of those things I, I kind of agonize over my leathers in general. And finding the right black is a challenge to find something, you know, the right look and feel and everything. This one, when, you, when it builds up, it's kind of firm. And mm -hmm. so I do recommend that when people first get the strap to kind of like bend it back and forth where it's going to bend around the wrist to kind of loosen it up. Yeah. Um, but it'll, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those straps, might be the last black strap you'll ever need, which may not be good agree. for my business, but uh, it's, uh, it's a strap that's going to last, um, which you, you would expect it to last. Yeah, I think it's great for your business because it means I'm going to order one of everything else. So yeah, there um, you go. that's that's the way I like to look at it. I love that. Um, Greg, can you give us, you know, before we kind of wrap up and, and tell everyone where to find you and, and how to order stuff outside the military edition, can you maybe give us a little tour or tell us any anything you're willing to show us as far as how it's made? So this is my shop. I'll probably start over here. Um, I work in my basement, which my wife, she calls me the Keebler elf down in the down in the basement <laughs> cobbling. But, um, and it's, I did do like a, a rapid clean, but so just don't look too close. Um, anyway, uh, this wall, uh, I uh, found a, an old barn nearby that was falling apart. And I love old stuff. I love the kind of the vintage feel. So it was cedar siding. And so I went and found the farmer and uh, asked him if I could have the wood. And he's like, yeah, sure. So I picked up a bunch of it. But um, these clocks don't work. Um, but I thought it was cool because I've got customers all over the world, New York, London, Moscow, Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, kind of helps me know who's, who's up and when I can reach them. Yeah, that's um, cool. But, uh, oh, yeah, canvas. So I- All the canvas I bags. Stuff, yeah, when I find stuff I like, I buy all of it. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of cool. This is a Czech military um, pack. Some of these had dates of like 1952. Wow. On them. Uh, this is, I don't know what this is. That was like a, uh, it's like a gas mask bag. I don't know huh. if you can see inside that, but um, yeah, it's just kind of cool. Uh, Army service gas mask. That's kind of got almost like a yellowish tone to it. Yeah. Um, French ammo bags. I, I've already kind of scavenged these, but these are old French military um, canvas bags, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's that. This is a, a table that's super like messy, but got some of my watches on here. 
that's a piece that I did a uh, collaboration with one of my knife maker friends, uh, Lucas yeah. Burnley. Cool. Um, I've got leather stashed here, old ammo cans uh, that I repurposed for strap cases. Yeah. Um, old. It's an old um, Swedish ammo bag. Nice. That are almost almost impossible to find anymore. Um, stuff over there. Uh, <laughs> leather. It's like. Yeah. The leather, leather closet. Love it. Leather closet. It's like, I've got so much leather. <laughs> it's like, it's ridiculous. All right. So then this is, this is the shop where I spend like most of my time. There's my, uh, my old tanker desk that I picked up. Oh, that's amazing. With like a, a period correct chair, which is the most uncomfortable chair, but I can't get myself to put anything else. Yeah. Um, oh, it just, it anyway. fits right in right there. Yeah. Uh, sewing machine, thread, uh, die press. So this is a Tipman uh, die press. And so if there's something that I make a lot of, I'll get a die made. And these are just some of my die patterns, uh, watch yep. strap patterns right here and stuff. And it helps me kind of keep consistency and it's a huge time saver. Sure. So there's that uh, beer fridge, which it's is important. which is empty because I'm trying not to uh, drink while I work. Um, it's probably good. I can't. I can't throw anything away. So there's always like scraps that I'm like, okay, I could make like a pen sleeve or a keychain or, <laughs> or something out of this stuff. So I never get rid of it. Um, let's see, this has got a couple straps here that are uh, in progress right now. Um, anyway, uh, it's where I glue everything right there. Cool. Um, I like to have my watches close by hanging. Um, there you go. I don't know why I just, I like it. So, so those are, those are all examples of other stuff you make, right? Like you do keychains. I see the, the lighter. Um, yeah. You, so I, I do a lot of different things. So keychains. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. I got a uh, little simple wallets from a yeah. shell quarter than leather. That's awesome. Do that uh, field notes, a yep. notebook. Half the price and twice the quality of Shinola. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know how much Shinola is. I it's, it's going to be you twice the quality, but it might. You don't. Be more you don't want to know. <laughs> um, you know that. Yeah, I won't say anything about Shinola. Um, yeah, I won't either. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll uh, leave it. Tell at us that. A bit, so, Tell us about that. Uh, the canvas bag. Is that oh, the one so the that? Canvas. Uh, yeah. So uh, Steve Brady's one of your customers. Yeah. Uh, I guess he reached out to you about. Um, getting some straps made from his old military bag. Yeah, yeah, he's buying a, he's buying one of our second edition uh, military watches, and he he asked me if if he could you know basically have us make a, a custom strap out of his personal bag for his personal watch, and um, and yeah, I just connected you guys because obviously I I can't do that. That's that's your your realm, but um, I'm stoked. I I'm just happy you said yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's cool. He's got his name written on it. Um, so cool. I just, I just noticed that it says Brady right there also. Yeah. So yeah, we'll awesome. incorporate, when I make his straps, I'll kind of incorporate that into it. Um, yeah. Adds just a little bit more interest and character. But, um, oh, he's got some more stuff right here. How about that? There you yeah. go. Now, do you ever try to, if you find like lettering and writing on stuff like that, do you try to incorporate that in some, like some of the straps? I do, yeah. Especially like on the old vintage stuff. So one yeah. of my favorite um, materials to work with is I've got, the, these are old Swiss military motorcycle gaiters. Oh, that's awesome. So you can see that kind of straps up over their boot and, yeah. and, and the leather is like amazing on this stuff. And so, for example, this one is, can you see that? 1962? Yeah. Right oh, there. That's neat. Yeah. And Bieri, I don't know if that's the maker or if that's the town that it was made in. Sure. Um, and then you can kind of see there's like a flag. Just flip there. A little there's emblem kind of or a, uh, yeah, yeah, there's like a Swiss mark right there. And so yeah. let's see if I've got it on this. Yeah. So this is one of my pilot watches uh, made from the same leather. Um, this, this one here is 1962. This one is dated... 56. That's really uh, cool. In, in Bern, Switzerland. And so, yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to like include that 
you know, sort of the detail in the strap if, if I've got it available. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Well, yeah. thanks for showing us all that. I have a, a couple other questions. I was just curious, you know, um, uh, I guess how a customer, obviously like for us, you know, I sent you some bags and, and we got three different straps made for the military edition and they just come with our watch. But if a customer wants um, another strap for, for any Vortec watch or any watch in general, um, you know, what, uh, what do you prefer and, and what are the customer's options? Um, I, email's easiest for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some customers try to call and I love talking to people, but then I have to write down all the notes and yeah. I can't search it or anything. So email is always the easiest way to reach me. Sure. Um, on my website, there's a link for contact. Yep. Um, Instagram, I'm pretty active on that. Um, and so really it's just take a look at my website, uh, kind of more of a gallery. I don't have it set up for e-commerce yet. It's yeah. been on my to-do list for the last 10 years. <laughs> and um, Yep, I understood. But, uh, but uh, yeah, if they can just take a look at what I have. A lot of my current stuff's on Instagram. I do need to update some of my newer leathers onto my website. But that gives them a good feel for what I make and kind of a feel for the different leathers that I offer and different things. So they can say, hey, I found this image on your Instagram or on your website. Can you make me something like this? Is that yes. kind of how yeah. that's easiest? Okay. Yeah, that's cool. the easiest way. So they just, you know, they let me know. Um, I need to know their, their wrist size, obviously, um, yep. and then what watch it's building for. So lug width, wrist size, um, and then we go from there. Um, I've that's built awesome. probably 10 to 15,000, right, probably closer to 15,000 watch bands um, yeah. over the last 15 years. And so I think I've, I probably built for almost every watch out there. And yeah. I like to think I've got a pretty good idea for what matches and what goes. And, um, I don't get a lot of customers. I, I can't remember the last time I had an angry customer other than maybe if it took an extra week or two longer to get their order done. But, uh, <laughs> well, you won't, you won't have that for my customers because my customers are used to, <laughs> used to waiting a while. We, uh, we Perfect. just like you, we can't make very many watches. So, uh, we, yeah. we, we, um, thankfully have, have a lot of patient, um, customers knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Um, Greg, so it's Greg Stevens design.com, right. And, Correct. uh, at Greg Stevens design on Instagram. I'll put links under this video. I'll probably put this on, on YouTube, on our, our Vortec Watches YouTube channel, and then also on our, our military edition webpage where you can learn all about the watch. Um, so you can uh, go see Greg. And um, Greg, I'll send you um, just the specs and any information you need on all of our other watches besides the military edition. And that's what, that way if my other customers wanna reach out and get you know, another strap for their railroad edition or their American artisan series watch, you know, you'll have some of that information. Um, I think the only weird thing about our watches is with the 12 o'clock crown, we kind of put a notch on, on one side of the strap to kind of get yeah. the, the strap out of the way of the crown. But um, you and I can solve that problem for our, our joint customers. Sure. Um, is, is there anything else you'd like to, to share or, or that, that I miss? I don't, think so so cool. um, this has been great um, I, I I gotta say I was really excited when um, when we connected last year yeah um, I thought it was great I've, I've kind of been following you for a while and the opportunity to build straps for for these watches is is something that I was really happy about and I was even more thrilled to hear back from you this year so <laughs> yep yeah no I, I didn't think about even looking elsewhere um, and, I, and I will never um, at this point these straps are, are just amazing um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I found you because I went on probably one of those same Facebook forums that were all on, you know, micro brand watch or something like right. that. And, um, and I said, Hey, uh, I need a custom military style, um, American made strap and you know, who's, who's the best. And I think there was like 10 or 12 people that just tagged you and linked you. And I, I don't, there was one or two other options, but so many people said, you got to talk to Greg that you know, I, uh, I did and, you know, never look back. So thank you thank so you. much for your hard work, your time, your effort. I, I love these straps. Um, I'm going to put all kinds of pictures of the straps in here. If you own a military edition, the strap on your wrist is, was made right there by Greg, you know, uh, in that process that he just showed us. Um, Greg, thanks again so much for your time. And um, thanks for joining us if you're watching.
All right. Thanks, RT. Keep it up.